Why on earth did we play Rook e5? I guess there is only one way to find out, right? Let's say white takes on, uh, on e5. What was the idea after that? Let's see if we can remember this before we get started. Uh, all right. I'll quiz you on this one just to see if you remember what was this about. I think if you play like that, that says samurai, my king can escape, right? It will escape by f3, e2. So, uh, congratulations, uh, JM Chess, Charles Hua, Santos. That's the right way to go. White is inevitably mated here. Oh, I see. Thanks for information, Chess Samurai. Alex Ostrovsky covered one of his games in this variation. I see. <coughs> nice. So, a lot of people got this right. Aha, uh -huh. excellent. JM Chess, Charles Hua, Santos, MM Thinker, Amazin. And a lot of people, they went for the other uh, possibility. But, uh, okay, let's uh, see very quickly if we can find out the difference here between the two moves. So, all right. Let's ask uh, JM Chess. You were the fastest one, so please go ahead. How do you continue with black here? Queen e6, so that we can pick up this pawn in a smarter way. I'll play... King g1, king s2, sorry. And we take it in this way. I think that if we play the other check, I could play king g3, right? Yeah, we did this in tactical surprises too. I'm just uh, repeating it. Aha. Uh -huh. So I think this is not, perhaps not working 100%. Um, so, yeah. So, I'll, uh, no, I just wanted to repeat what we saw last time. So please go ahead, uh, JM Chess. Exactly. So now we have the mating threat and this pawn makes a huge difference. If I play g3, I'm mated. Anyway. Aha. Uh -huh. Wait, wasn't the line different? M maybe it was, but this looks uh, very convincing, doesn't it? I think we're winning here in all, in every variation, right? So I think that's the way to go, right? We had this position. Black had played a very weird move, rookie five. Um, the line was different. I think queen takes e5 first as added chess. You think so? Uh, I mean, you have to give the check, right? You need to pick up the pawn with, with check. So that's why you play queen e6, if I'm not mistaken. So when I play... Oh, I, I think I know what you mean. If I play king g3, then you have to play queen g4, right? Then it's a different story. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. That's more forcing line. So I was just trying to be a little confusing here and play king h2 instead. Aha. So then you said we should play queen takes e5 first. Wow, this got uh, confu it, this became a little confusing. Oh, you put knight e4 and that was wrong, says Aha. Uh -huh. I think this is possible for white to say. However, if we play the other way around, queen takes e5, I think white is already beyond salvation here. Correct me if I'm wrong, but they have no way they can avoid uh, mate here. I don't know. If you play something like this, I can... I can just go get closer with the queen, right? And then I'm I'm ready to play knight g4. Please notice the huge impact of this pawn on f3. If it wasn't for that pawn, we would just move away the queen and run away with the king, right? Aha. Anyway, that's a tactical surprise. We already finished that topic. Sorry. All right. So uh, excellent. Very welcome everyone. Today we will have a look at pawn play. We will have a look at different facets of pawn play, how we can use our pawns for a variety of different ideas. Uh, what do we know about uh, pawn play? Well, for example, we can use pawn play in order to open files and diagonals. That's very basic. We can use them to strengthen squares in the center, for example, for our knights. We can also use the pawns to restrict our opponent. We can gain space. We can create a passed pawn, we can advance our majority, our minority, you know, the minority attack and so on. A lot of different things where we can use our pawns. So that's what I would like to have a look at today. We will have um, a little warm up here. I want to show you something which borders between, I would say, tactics and strategy. Here we go.
something which I would say it's, it's in between tactics and strategy. So speaking of the Slav, here we are again. We're playing the Slav with white this time. We're playing with white pieces. I would like to know how white should continue in this position. So this is about pawn play. It's about dynamics. I would like to see if you can find the very nice way in which the Swedish international master Milton Panzer was able to finish off his opponent in this game. All right, here we go. I'll give you 130 for this little mission. Take your time, guys. Take your time. Uh, make sure that you have the move order in the right uh, way. And please stick to chess in the chat, okay? Only chess in the chat. Other uh, movies, uh, other games, you can take that on a different occasion, but not here. All right, we have our first winner, Chess Samurai. Got it right. That's exactly what happened in the game. Great work by Chess Samurai. We have a lot of people who play it in a different way. Please be careful with the move order. Um, if you push that pawn, I'll take it with the E pawn. Just for your information, I'll take it with the E pawn. Second winner today, MM Thinker. All right, three winners, L008, got it also. Careful, Charles Hua, Troy Boy, RZ, and Kwoki. Um, that leads to a problem with your rook on G1, if I'm not mistaken. Blue Ocean and the human person, you will let me block that pawn forever. And in that way, I'll be able to restrict both your bishops. All right. Uh, nice. So we had uh, quite a few winners here, but uh, many students who got it wrong also. So let's uh, listen to Chess Samurai. Chess Samurai, you were the fastest one on this one, so please go ahead. How do you continue? Okay, so I'm going to go um, I mean, I guess obviously D5, but um... We're gonna go immediately because he has in d5, and then we're we're not really going much. With, I mean, we're not really getting anywhere. We're gonna win the g7 pawn, but that's basically it. So we'll yeah, I mean, if pawn. if you play d5, uh, how do you think Black would recapture on d5? He takes d5. Aha, with a pawn, right? And then so on d5, on f5. Aha. Uh -huh. So just like you're saying, Black doesn't really care about this pawn. I think king safety is the most important thing here. They will probably cast long. And uh, they are fortunate that this square is not protected. So there are no tricks with f6, for example. Uh, and this means that they can perhaps take this pawn next turn or they can perhaps play bishop f6. And their king is in relative safety. So uh, you're right. d5 would be wrong uh, execution. However, it's interesting to notice that if black would take in the other way, this would already lead, lead to some, some dynamics coming up on the queen side. Anyway, please go ahead, just Samurai. I won't interrupt you anymore. Please uh, continue. Aha, uh -huh. so I'll take back. You can move the pieces, by the way. Okay, okay. D5. Exactly. It's now or never, right? Don't even think about the move like bishop c4. Bad mistake, right? Yeah, 95. Exactly, 95. And uh, I think black is already better here. The white bishop just died, you could say. The bishop on b2, it's never going to get back into this game. So it's very important, like you say, to push d5 at this very moment. So, tricky for black now, very tricky. The pawn has advanced. The bishop is very happy. The rook is also very happy. Like we were saying, pawns have the ability of opening up space for, for our pieces. Now, let's say I take with a pawn, okay? How do you continue? Um, here I'm going to go... Um, weak pawn, right? C4 or something? Maybe you could play bishop c4. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe I could play something like queen queen somewhere. No, queen queen c6, is that? Queen e6? Uh, is rook d5 a possibility still? Well, I can sometimes castle after that. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. I see. Ah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I understand. You have a yeah, very I, good tactical eye. I'll go the other side, okay? I'll go to the other side then. <laughs> now that I know about your evil intentions, I'll put my queen there. Uh, uh, maybe rook d5 instead of bishop c1. I see. Rook takes d5 right now, you mean? Yes. But that's quite different to the game, isn't it? Yeah. 
Now, now I'll take the pawn and I'm, I'm not down material. Uh, bishop c4? Right. But how do you make this work? I don't follow. Bishop d1? Uh, bishop d4, yeah. But we will end up uh, equal or am I missing something? If I play, let's say, queen... Yeah, where should I put my queen? Uh, not on c6, though. I can see the chippo coming up. So I should play queen d6, right? Bishop g8. And bishop g8 and... Uh... Yeah, if you say so. Yeah, interesting. Maybe I can castle here. I don't know. Is this crazy or do you have some some initiative? Bishop eight seven. Yeah, maybe you're right. I think I lost my way here in the tactics. You played bishop c four. Should I put my queen somewhere else? Maybe. Um, let's think about this very very quickly. I couldn't take that pawn. Yeah, good question. Actually, very interesting. Variation. Yeah, maybe you can play like this. Maybe I should take it. You play it bishop d4, I go back. You take on g8. Maybe I should play something like knight 96 instead. Could I do that? Some knight move. Is that possible? 96 to, to go queen d7 and rook c8. Is this so bad for black? I guess I'm, I'm in bad shape here, right? Or what do you play? Bishop e6 and rook g7. Oh no, no, sorry. Yeah. Aha, I have this one coming up, right? Yeah. Okay. I think I'm still in the game. Titan chess says queen c4. Queen c4, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can play that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm trying to find my way here without using an engine as, as usual. Um, I think I have some chances here. King d8 and rook c8, maybe. Um, I think we're losing a track a little. I think there is a much easier way to play. Um, so, I mean, this is a fancy way to play, but I don't think it's needed. If we consider the fact that this pawn is weak and Black's king is stuck in the center, I think there is a better uh, move. Will we do chess.com classroom? I don't know, chess samurai. I don't know. That doesn't depend on me. It's uh, Greg Shahadi who decides uh, these matters. Uh, yeah, I heard there is a new classroom coming out by chess.com. Interesting. I hope we will have a chance to look at that at some point. So, uh, Chess Samurai is looking at rook takes d5. We had rook takes d7 also. Uh, bishop b5 and c6. I think there is a better move than all of these moves uh, that you're saying. Don't you think the white bishop is dying to get to b5? Don't you think that's white's main priority here? Or am I missing? Exactly. RZ 2018. That's, that's the move that I think is the strongest one. I simply want to take on c7. I want to put my bishop on d5, and I want to take the pawn on d5. Nothing else. And I don't see any way in which black can really survive here in, in this situation. I don't know. We can try something. Let's say rook c8. Um, I guess we can take, right? So we're about to play bishop b5. They have to take with the queen. And... Yeah. What do you think? Bishop b5, maybe? Looks uh, dreadful for black, this, this whole situation. Very difficult for black. Simply their king is too weak here. We're attacking that pawn also. We have a passer, by the way. Um, yeah, this this is pretty pleasant. Exactly. Long castle says Santos. When when are we going to cast along? When might that be? Here. That's a brave decision, no? Cast along. But maybe you're right. Maybe that's what you should do. But uh, still, I think it's very unpleasant for for white for black. Sorry, this uh, this whole position. But c6, yeah, queen e6 maybe. Bring in the queen somehow, right? We should bring in the queen. Maybe we can play queen, queen d2, queen d4, and so on. Um, yeah, white has a pleasant advantage. I don't know if they are winning. After all, today is a strategy class, so uh, maybe you have this fancy plan of you know king b1 and even some queen sacrifice. Who knows? Uh, might come up here. So I think they're in trouble here. Uh, summing up, let, let's go back to the to the initial position. We we started from this situation, right? We have like dynamics in the center. So uh, we had it here the solution by chess samurai, pawn text, pawn text, and d5. And we have to look at knight xd5. So what did follow here, chess samurai? Rook d5. Yeah, I guess you can also play out the moves. Thanks to this fantastic chessable platform, chess samurai can actually play out the moves himself instead of asking me to, to play them out. Exactly. So I cannot take with a the pawn, then there is bishop d5 coming up. Bishop d5. So queen d5, please continue. Aha, now there's a counter threat, so, so we shouldn't take on g8 right now. 
We should make an uh, intermediate move bishop d4. I have to move my queen and white wins. Sure. Nice. So that's basically what this is about. Please notice a very important strategical factor here. If you don't play d5, black will play knight d5. And that would be a completely different story. Then actually we're sitting with a bad bishop also. So it's important to understand this dynamic facet of pawn play. Open up files. I mean, we're opening one diagonal. We're opening up one file. And indirectly also we are uh, perhaps opening up another diagonal as well. All right. Thanks, uh, Chess Samurai, for your great work. Let's continue. Let's look at another situation where pawn play is very important. So all the games that we will look at today, they are from last year, from 2021. I think this game was played in the African Championship, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see if this game comes up. Yeah, so here we are. You're playing with the black pieces here in this uh, game. You are playing black. T please try to find the best way to go with the black pieces here. Try to find a smart plan, a clever plan with the black pieces here in this uh, seemingly quiet uh, position. All right. We'll play out a few moves here. Uh, let's see if we can do this in the right way. Um, let's see. We'll go to move number four. All right. Uh, good luck, everyone. Remember, pawn play. Today's topic is playing with our pawns, using our pawns in the most uh, clever way possible. All right. Interesting move, uh, Dragonina, but I think you're inviting my knight to the battle. The same goes for you, Santos. Pikachu, you're bringing my knight. You're improving my knight by playing like that, aren't you? So I don't think that's the right choice. Aha. Uh -huh. What else? Okay, HDI Chess, you're on the right track, definitely. Uh, so is Chess Samurai and Titan Chess. Aha. Uh -huh. Nice. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so a lot of people are inviting the white knight to the game. That can't be right, can it? But some people are on the right track also. Um, all right, so don't forget that sometimes we can use our pawns in order to weaken our opponent's pawn structure. So that's what this example is about. Using our pawn in order to soften up their pawn structure. So how can that be done? And on which part of the board are we going to act here? All right. So please notice, guys, the difference between pawn play and improving our pieces. That's a different story. We had some uh, classes about improving the pieces also. So you could, uh, of course, consider a move like somebody said rook a6, for example, bringing in the rook to c6. There was another suggestion, knight e6. I understand that move. Maybe the knight is now putting some pressure on the pawn and so on. Uh, in many different... Yeah, some people got it, yeah, but not the whole solution. But uh, you got the right idea. So please notice the distinction here between improving our pieces and improving our pawn structure. Improving the pawn structure, that's not something that the pieces can really do, apart from provoking weaknesses and so on. So we're mainly speaking about the pawns themselves here. Um, some people are saying here b5. If you play b5, you're inviting my knight to c5. I can't say this is right because uh, if you then take, white is very happy to open up the long diagonal for the bishop. And if you don't do it, well, the knight is very strong on c5. So that doesn't look like a right move. b6, somebody said. Yeah, that makes more sense because you're then uh, not letting me play knight c5. However, in the game, what black knows is was that on the king side, White doesn't have that many minor pieces. No, only this bishop is around. These pieces are, are far away. So they took the opportunity to act on the king side to soften up White's king side defenses. Let's uh, listen to some of those who got uh, the first move. Titan chess. All right, uh, Titan chess. What do you play here? Uh, exactly, h5. Those of you who play White in the Dutch defense, for example, you know that sometimes in the Dutch, uh, when black has pawns like, like this, you can play h4, h5. I think even at move three or four, it sometimes happens, no? That white soften ups with h5, h4. So that's exactly the same, uh, the same idea. Some people are playing black in the King's Indian. You might have the same situation, no? White has pawns on a2, b3, c4, and you go a5, a4. Exactly the same picture. So h5, very pretty move. We're about to play h4. 
White played in the game. Okay, in, the, in Karo Khan also. Yeah, that, that also happens in the Karo Khan, of course. Uh -huh. In some, in many openings, I would say, you have this situation. Okay, knight c5, white is attacking the pawn. Of course, we are not going to... Yeah, exactly. Sorry, I was just going to say that. We are not uh, going to let them uh, fork the queen and the bishop. Let me just import it again. Something happened here with the platform. Sorry. So, h5, knight c5. I was just saying, we won't let this happen. So, you're right. Titan chess, rook b8, of course. Aha. So, rook b8. Uh, in the game, what did white play here? They played rook a e1. Aha. So, I think there are like minor details here. Black didn't want, I think what black noticed was that if the knight could come back, maybe, just maybe, white could try to direct the knight to e5. So, they hurried to play here the move b6. In this way, white must uh, move the knight somewhere else. So, they played here knight a6. And after that, um, chess, uh, who was moving the pieces? It was Titan chess, right? So, Titan chess, how do you continue now? Now the time is right, no? White has no threat, so just continue with your plan, please. I don't have the pawn. I think I gave it to you. Okay, here we go again. Right. So, notice timing here. H4 is the right moment. Uh, we should notice also that White was never able to play H4 themselves, of course because of bishop takes d3. So h4 was played in the game, and no matter how white reacts here, it's difficult for, for them, because if they play something like, let's say, g4, you can see for yourself, uh, we have some weaknesses. Uh, one idea which comes to mind here, uh, Titan chess, what would that be? Simple tactical trick that we learned um, when we were kids. I mean, <laughs> when we were beginners, I should say. What do you think comes to mind here? You take, and what then? All right, interesting. I didn't see this coming, coming, but okay, I believe you. Interesting idea. Aha, you're going all in here. I thought of something more, much more simple. Uh, sometimes when I work with beginners, I tell them to look out for this plan. Uh, how can you use your queen and bishop in a smart way? Or queen c7 says Amazon. Yeah, that's probably a good move also. But I would definitely good look at this good old uh, idea of, uh, you know, bishop c7 and queen d6 looks, looks nice now. I would play it in this way because if I play bishop c7 straight away, maybe they can take. And I don't know if this, if this means something, but um, yeah, I can take with the knight. But then maybe they can play f4 at some point. My knight was targeting the pawn on g4 and so on. But okay, it doesn't matter so much. The important thing is that we understand that this is very beneficial for us. We have been able to open up the, the game. So Chess Samurai was saying, or who was it? Uh, Titan Chess was saying something with h3. I understand you want to bring the queen to h4. Yeah, that's very impressive. I don't know if that works. But um, yeah, I mean, if it doesn't work, it doesn't matter. We can still play the other way. I would definitely keep this pawn. I think it's it's a nice pawn to have in the end game and so on. Oh, you think that would work? L008 says that this should actually work. How can you make that work if I take and I play rookie two? Where is the mate? I don't follow. Or queen e2. Yeah. So, yeah, though that doesn't work really. So we shouldn't get too excited here. We have a good position already, but we don't have to, to play in that uh, drastic way. I think bishop c7 is a smart way. So here we are speaking about improving our pieces again, right? So, yeah, h4, very smart move in the game. I think they played f4 instead. Let's check what happened in the game. Yeah, they played f4. But now it's clear that also our knight is very happy. At some point, it can go to e4 or g4, uh, speeding up the attack. In the game, black took on g3 and played queen d7. This was very clever because now the queen is coming to these weak squares. We can clearly see what happened here. Black used his h-pawn in order to soften up white's pawn structure, and now many of their pieces are really happy about this. Queen d3, knight e4, that's how the game went. Knight e4, you, you can see there is some tactical trick coming up with queen h3, king g1, queen f5. Black is simply preparing to go Rook e6, rook e8, maybe rook g6, and so on. Very difficult for white to survive here. You can also see that this bishop is not doing anything. So, yeah, nice example. I like this example. h5 is a very smart move to play h4 next turn. Please notice this is the right moment for this. There is no annoying bishop g5, for example. There is no h4 because we have bishop takes d3. And after all, pushing this pawn. I saw somebody was saying g5, but look for yourself. Look at the big difference. No, if you play g5, uh, you weaken yourself, the position, very much, right? If you play g4, the f-file might open up. But h5, it's not that... Uh, 
how can I say, jeopardizing for the Black King. It's not something that really puts in danger the Black King. It's just, it just gives us moral advantages. Even in the end game, this is good for us. All right. Amazon says, light squares are weak, but this is advantageous because white is the only one who has the light square bishop. Yeah, that's almost philosophical, but I think I understand what you mean. Aha. Uh -huh. Great work by Amazon. Yeah. I'll continue. Let's have a look at our next example. This one should not be that difficult. It's a typical position from the Sicilian dragon, what we have next. I would like to mix a little e4 openings and d4 openings as well. So here we go with a d4, well, sorry, with the e4 opening. Let's see if I can get this right. All right. Let's see. Chessable platform is thinking, and here we go. You're playing with the black pieces here in the Sicilian dragon, something like that. Please think carefully about which would be black's best uh, plan here, okay? That's what I'm interested in. Uh, how should black continue in this, in this position? Okay, I'll just ask you for two moves here. It's strategy today, so we don't have so long variations, all right? Here we go. The first one, I think, is simple, and the second one might be a little more tricky, okay? Interesting move by JM Chess. I, I like the idea, but it doesn't have the same effect as in the last example, right? Guinea pig. I think wrong, wrong lesson. <laughs> We're not in the tactics lesson today. Guinea pig, Charles Hua and Chess Samurai. That's uh, too much, uh, I'm afraid. But okay, we can talk about it uh, later. I understand you want the, the two pieces, uh, the rook for two pieces and so on. Uh, interesting anyway, interesting. Interesting way to, to put more spice on this game. Okay, Amazon, you got it. Nice thinking. Awesome, Owen, uh, careful with that uh, pawn on d6. Pikachu. Should you really give away that pawn? Is that intentional? Santos, you got the right move uh, but first, but then the second move is, looks like you're blundering a pawn. HDI chess, that makes a lot of sense, um, definitely. MM Thinker and Adi chess, that's a nice maneuver with a knight, but maybe we can use it later. Quoki, I like your idea. That's very similar to what happened in the game. So Quoki, you're very close on this one. But so far, only Amazon was able to uh, repeat what happened in the game. All right, let's listen to Amazon first. Uh, let's see, how do I uh, give the pawn to Amazon? All right, please go ahead. How do you play? Aha, B5. Please notice, guys, here we have a typical minority attack situation. I told you, majorities, minorities, it's important. Some openings like the Sicilian or the Karokan, the exchange variation, we can end up with two pawns versus three. And in that case, it's interesting for us, strategically speaking, trying to advance those pawns. We will try to leave our opponent with one single pawn in the end, which we can attack. Very similar to the minority attack in the Karlsbad structure in the Queen's Gambit, by the way. Anyway, so, if, yeah, minority attack, exactly. There are many different kinds of minority attacks, right? Not only the Karlsbad structure, many different minority attacks. All right, so white, apparently, they didn't want to castle away here. I think, using some basic psychology, I think they didn't like, oh, you mean knight b6? Maybe, maybe. My theory is that they didn't like the exchange of queens. Well, I'm saying this because I know what they played in the game. Uh, so I kind of know the, the answer. But I think they didn't like this. And as you can see here, white has a bishop pair, but it's not really important here. Black's plan here is what I think some people were saying in the, in the, in the quiz. Like HDI Chess and Lele were saying. or And who else was saying this? Uh, Quacky, Quacky, especially Quacky was saying rook b8, a5, and b4. That's a very, very pleasant plan for black. Great plan to fix a weakness or create a weakness on b2. So white didn't like the looks of this. And for that reason, in the game, they played instead here the move uh, queen d3. So that's why I'm saying I think that they didn't want to castle because they didn't like the looks of the of queen c5. And then we play here queen a7. This is a very smart move because we're avoiding castles. And at the same time, um, Amazon, if bishop e3, what did you prepare here? What did you prepare on bishop e3? Exactly. Nice tactical thinking. 
Exactly. No, no, don't do that. Don't. You were very close, but that's a self goal. Don't play knight. Uh, yeah, queen c7 says strategical Seymour. Exactly. Queen c7, and we can take here. Uh, if we're, I think we can also get away with knight xd1, maybe. But okay, I think queen c7 looks cleaner. So yeah, exactly, Titan chess. You can probably get away with knight xd1 also. So please notice, guys, here you can see why did they put the queen on a7? Why not on b6? Well, in that case, white can play bishop b3 because the queen is undefended on b6. So knight xb2, we could play bishop takes b6. So such small details are important. We can go to the this diagonal in three different ways. But uh, a7 is the best place tactically because bishop b3 will fail to knight xb2. And at the same time, we don't want to put the queen on c5 because that might be the knight's uh, square. And they didn't play knight c5 because they knew that then white could move the queen and put the bishop on e3 and, and get castled. So, so very nice thinking here by Grandmaster Vasquez. Uh, b5, queen d3, queen a7. White have difficulties here in this game. Let's see very quickly what uh, happened. They played here g3, preparing some kind of artificial castles. And we just stick to our plan. Rook b8, king f1. So what did black play here? Anyone, please write in the chat. What would black... Exactly. Oh, we have already a player here. Amazon is making the moves. Exactly, a5. So white try the move queen c2. I'll quiz you on the next move, guys, just to see what happens. Uh, I just want to quiz you on this one. Very quickly, what do you think we should play here with black? Anyone? Smart move from... Aha, from HDI chess. You're the fastest one. Google chess, you're... Uh, blundering your knight, don't do that. Guinea pig, you got it. ADI chess, MM Thinker, L008. That's fast thinking, um, like multi functional moves. That's what we're speaking about here. Don't uh, blunder the knight, please. Uh, okay, strategic simul, you got it also. Let's listen to HDI chess. All right, HDI chess, which is the smartest move here. Exactly. Queen d7, just in case we're annoying them a little, but. More importantly, once they play king g2, we are ready to play b4. Exactly, because our queen is also protecting the knight. So that's a very useful move to the queen d7. That's how the game went. We have a typical minority attack. I didn't say anything about this bishop, but I'm pretty sure you noticed it from the very beginning. He's very happy about what is going on on the queen side. Now we are about to fix a weakness or create a weakness in white's camp. They took on before. Um, yeah, this pawn is hanging now, so they had to take also rook takes before. Uh, very, very nice picture. We have pressure against b2, the other rook is coming as well. b3, knight c3. Black had a huge, huge advantage here and went on to win. So, summing up what we have seen in this example, simple example b5, the plan of pushing the pawns, the typical minority attack. Very important if you play, for example, the Sicilian dragon with black, or if you play uh, the Karo Khan with black, the exchange variation of Queen's Gambit with white. Uh, anyway, some people were saying here, uh, the move bishop takes c3. I thought this was very interesting also. So let's have a quick look at this. Pawn takes, knight takes. I think, uh, who said this? Uh, Chess Samurai. Chess Samurai said that the, the less pieces on the board, the stronger the team of rook and pawns. And that's 100% correct. So if black is able to swap all the pieces here, they're very happy to, to get to, to, into this kind of material relation. So I think what white will try to do, they'll try to keep pieces on the board. So I would play something like queen b3 maybe. Should I play like that? I don't know, but I'm just guessing. No, I'll play queen b3. If you take, could I take with the king maybe? I'll put my bishop on b2. Maybe you'll bring a rook to c8. I don't know. I'll put my bishop on b2. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not convinced that this is so good for black. Uh, if you can convince me, please go ahead. But um, the, the, the major pieces, they're not able to enter right now. And who knows if I'm able to organize my pieces here somehow. Yeah. Queen c5 is equal, perhaps, as Titan chess. All right. I don't have a clue. Probably. Probably you're right, if you say so. That's entirely possible. This might be equal. Maybe white's king is still in some trouble, so... I think this plan is interesting. Uh -huh. I think this plan is interesting. It should be taken seriously. Uh, Bishop takes c3. After all, black wins a point, you could say, right? They get a rook and two pawns for two minor pieces. But uh, OK, what they played in the game, I like it even more. Simply getting on with a, with a minority attack. All right, time for our next example. Let's see if we can import this into the great chessable classroom 
platform. Uh, hold on one moment, please. Um, here we go. All right. Here we're playing with the white pieces. Yeah, completely different story. This is some some other opening I was going to say. I don't even know which opening is this, but it could probably arise from any different openings. Let's say some Petrov, maybe e takes d5 with the Petrov, or yeah, maybe some Ray Lopez. Although there is no a6 on the board, so who knows? Anyway, yeah, I think it's a Petrov. Yeah, probably. Uh, let's uh, see if you can find the best plan for white here which was uh, used by the Croatian Grandmaster in this game. So here we go. Let me set up the quiz. Uh, let's see if we can find this, find out this together. Uh, all right, I'll just quiz you for, for two moves here. I think that's enough, okay? One minute 30. Please try to find the best way to continue here with white. Hint, what does the pawn structure tell you about this? What? When you look at the, at the skeleton, I mean, the structure of this position, what does this make you think? When you see this particular pawn structure, what does it make you uh, think about? Okay. All right. Many interesting moves uh, coming up here. Some people want to attack on the king side. Some other people want to gain space on the queen side. Guinea pig plays exactly like the Grandmaster. So you're our first winner here, Guinea Pig. Congratulations. Great work. That's a very clever strategical plan that you are applying here. Bishop takes h6. I'm sorry, guys. You're in the wrong class today. It's not a sparkling tactics today. It's pawn play using our pawns in order to improve our position. So uh, wrong lesson. Sorry. Yeah, if you play c4, I guess you provide me with a passed pawn, right? Um, interesting. Interesting move suggested by some people here. A lot of people want to play c4. Uh -huh. C4, d4, what, what will you play after that? All right, we have two winners. RZ 2018 also got it. So let's have a look uh, at first. Why not queen b5? Aha, Amazon, you got it. Yeah, Amazon is writing in the chat, but Guinea Pig got it uh, in the quiz. So please go ahead, Guinea Pig. What is your plan here? Exactly. Our bishop is in the way. If you look carefully at this position, we can see that we have a pawn majority. So it makes a lot of sense to try to push that majority forward. So that's why the bishop is going to g3. All right, you might say, why don't we put the bishop on c1 instead? Well, there is a subtle difference here. Um, Black could, in this case, play d4, try to clear some space on the d file. It's interesting that actually Black is benefited from this. Even though White has the bishop, you would say that White is happy to open up the game. But uh, that might not be completely the, the case. Black is happy to take on d4. They can later on strengthen this knight with a pawn. If you by chance play the Roy Lopez open variation with knight takes e4, you might come across this position, this kind of structure, and you're, I mean, imagine if you, the pawn's there. And this plan of d4 is extremely important in the Roy Lopez exchange variation, open variation, sorry. So, yeah. If, on the other hand, we play bishop g3 and black plays d4, guinea pig, what would you play with white? What is the difference with having the bishop here, guinea pig? How can we exploit this situation? Exactly. So now black has a bad choice between two bad options. One is to play move the rook and just drop a pawn for nothing. And the other one is to play g5. But then, as you can see, white has many targets on the king side. They can go for f4, they can go for h4, and so on. Very ugly. Exactly. Uh, well said, Amazon. g5 is extremely ugly. I agree with you. So this was not so easy for black in the game. In the game, they played here 95, which looks very reasonable. Those of you who play the Karo Khan, for example, you know that, or the French, this is a nice place for the knight. However, this is not the French. After white's move, uh, please go ahead, Guinea Pig. Yeah, we will go back to the strategic simmer. Don't worry. I thought we could first look at the main line and then look at other variations. Okay, I'm waiting for you, Guinea Pig, to play your move. Okay, waiting for too long here. Okay, thanks. 
So please notice, uh, guys, when Black plays knight f5, at first it appears as if they have some kind of blockade. But this is not the case. Yeah, our next move is very simple, bishop f2. Now you can see g4 is already coming up. There is a very nice game, by the way, Kar Karpov Yusupov. It's in Dvoretsky's books, uh, where Yusupov has such a position also, and at some point uh, Karpov starts gaining space on the king side. Anyway, I'll play h5 just to see if I'm able to block. Uh, White's pawn majority. Aha, Amazon says h3. That's right, we have g4 coming out. If I play h4, this looks nice, no? This looks nice, like if we're holding up White's uh, expansion on the king side. But that's not true. Yeah, Karpov Yusupov, exactly. I don't know which game. Yeah, a long time ago. Uh, Yusupov said that uh, that's the game where he learned uh, about Karpov's prophylactic way of thinking. Exactly, queen f3, great work. So look what's going on here. The queen is coming to g4. It's going to take that pawn. I have to play something like queen e6. You can stick to your plan, uh, guinea pig. Queen f will win the pawn, says Titan Chess. All right, if you say so, but please be specific. Why do you win the pawn here? So, anyone, can you find a nice move for white here? It's like dynamics versus uh, static. Exactly, e6. You're right. Nice move, no? Isn't it? In this way, we're able to unblock... Uh, Black's blockade, or call it what you like. Uh, I could try something like rook e8. Uh, it's a funny variation. Probably you can take this pawn also. But there is another move which I like here. If you just fight against the blockade, what would you play if you fight against the blockade? Let's see. How can you fight? Exactly, chess samurai. You got it. Rook e5. So dynamics uh, are winning this time against the static play. Black is unfortunately unable to maintain their blockade here. Yeah, so nice, uh, nice way of thinking. Now it looks like if black is doing fine. However, white has dynamic options here, like bringing the queen to g4, pussy six, rook e5, and so on. So this simply doesn't work. You might come across such positions in the French, for example, where you can. I think a pawn is missing on e6. If there was a pawn, if you could move that c pawn to e6, maybe then you can actually hold this and put the queen on e7. But this structure is like more unstable. White is sometimes able to push um, e6. So that's um, basic, basically what happened in the game. Bishop g3, very, very smart move. We want to play f4 as soon as possible to move this uh, pawn majority forward. In the game, they played here, let's say very quickly, knight e7, like we were saying. Uh, black, uh, after f4, rook e8, black noticed this situation. They played very well, I would say, black here, but the position was already difficult. Queen f3, so that we can put the bishop on f2 and later on go g4. Queen f5, and here white, I mean, he's a strong grandmaster, Saric, he's like 26, 50, he's very strong. So he sees uh, subtleties such as bishop f2, knight g6, and the pawn is hanging and we cannot defend it this way because of knight xe5, something like that. So he played first the move uh, h3, very, very clever, so that he can go this way instead and then play g4, extremely clever. Knight g6, bishop H2. Please notice that white is, of course, not interested in taking on d5. In that case, this pawn trade doesn't favor white at all because they lose all their strategical plan of uh, advancing the pawn majority and so on. So bishop H2, slowly but safely, we're going to play g4, we're going to play f5. In the end game, this will be very important. Black played queen c2. Anyone, what would you play with white here? You might think that we're about to attack here with f5 and so on, but it's not so much about attack, it's more about gaining space. So you don't really need to, to attack here. Well, g4, g4 is, is uh, proposed in the chat. Uh, I don't know, maybe g4 I can play knight h4 at some point. I don't know, maybe not here, but you will have to look out for this move at some point. I don't know. Could I play something crazy like this, maybe? To annoy you a little, or am I missing something? Exactly, added chess, you got it, queen f2. So, a strong player knows when the endgame favors them, right? Queen f2, very clever, so that after queen takes f2, king takes f2. As you can see, uh, white doesn't care that there won't be an attack. They're happy because they know that they're going to make f5 uh, work. Tactics is always present here, f5 will not work. Anyone, what would happen here? En passant, that's right. I don't think you should play g4. I might be able to play rook f8 and keep a blockade. But en passant, we win a pawn, right? Because if they take that way, we'll take and we'll take. 
And if they take in between, as you can see, we'll pick up the C7 pawn instead, right? By F5, I think. Aha. So, yeah. Difficult uh, situation for black. In the game, they just play 97, and you can guess white's next move, right? What did white play? Anyone? Of course, g4, later on they played f5. Uh, the bishop can come back and harass the black pieces if necessary, and so on. So I think this is a very pretty example, modern game from last year. Uh, you can see that simple plans like, you know, back in Cap Capablanca's days, uh, they would also play like this bishop d3. It's timeless uh, strategy. Uh, push uh, the majority, advance the majority, like in this case. All right, now let's look at other options. So which was your move here? Uh, queen b5? Who said queen b5? Uh, somebody said queen b5. Um, yeah, I guess you can play that. Aha. Uh, I understand. I should not play like this because you take on, on b7, right? This is not making sense for me. So what else can I play? Uh, protect the pawn, I guess. B6, is that possible? Or is there some flaw to this? What? Uh, yeah, what's going on here then? Uh, now, I guess, rook e8, maybe next turn. Oh, bishop g3 you want to play. Uh-huh. All right. Uh, doesn't look that bad. I don't want to take here, by the way. Just for the record, I'm not interested in playing this kind of endgame. Maybe bishop takes and this pawn is, is weak and so on. For sure, I will not go for that. Maybe I could play knight a5, although I didn't want to solve queens here. Yeah, it's slightly better than the game. Maybe, maybe you're right. But okay, let's let's have one more rook here. You want to take that pawn. If I play something like rook e8, then yeah, let's be practical. Okay, I won't save my tempo on protecting that pawn. Um, if you take, I'll, I'll play rook b8 and I'll pick up that pawn instead. So, yeah. Also, d4 is coming up, right? Right? I could also consider d4 at some point, which would save me or which would help me many, on many, many occasions to play d4. Um, e6 says Titan chess. I don't think so. I think this is okay for black. I'll take with the pawn and I'll push e5. I don't think this is any problem for, for black. If you take this pawn, I'll play e5. I think this is okay for black. After all, I have the center and, and so on. Maybe white is slightly better. Okay, but uh, play more for black. So I think uh, it's not making a lot of sense here. This whole plan of queen b5, sorry. b4 was suggested by some people. And I think that's a much smarter move because you actually avoid my c5. The, the critical test here would be something like, like maybe I can play a6 first to try to push d4 next turn. You can play a4. I don't know if I can play rook e8 maybe. Yeah, I guess white is better here. I guess white is better in, anyway. But I like much more what I played in the game. In my opinion, this is a much more natural plan. Just push the, the majority. All right, Chess Samurai is saying, Titan Chess is saying that uh, b4, a6, a4, knight, a, knight, e7. Interesting, yeah, you, I understand. You're having a look at the pawn on, on a4. Yeah, maybe you can bring the knight there. Somebody said rook e3 also. I understand, you're going for an attack. By the way, those of you who said bishop takes, I, this is not possible, right? I can always, I guess, bring over the knight and so on. It's not going to, to work, really. Um, but if you play rook e3, I think I'll play knight e7. And if you play rook g3, I can put my knight on, on g6, right? Yeah, I don't see any tactical fireworks here for, for white. Um, I think I'm covering the seventh rank also. So, all right, let's uh, move on. About majorities and minorities is what we have seen here. Now we will switch subject. I mean, we're still within pawn play, but we will look at a different facet of pawn play. Um, let's have a look at this nice game by American Grandmaster Brandon Jacobson with the white pieces. All right. Let's see if you can follow in the footsteps of the Grandmaster. He won this game in very nice fashion. I'll quiz you just for the next four moves. Okay. Uh, yeah, 130, I think. It's enough for you who are so good at strategy. So please go ahead. Was this in the Charlotte Open? Uh, I don't know. I can check that, of course. Where was? Yeah, Charlotte Open last year. Uh -huh. All games today, like I was telling you, they are from uh, last year to 2021.
Why to play? Think about what does this have to do with pawn play? I'm not saying that you have to push a pawn right now, by the way. Um, just try to find a smart strategical plan with white pieces based on pawn play somehow. Okay. All right. I get a point, uh, Lele and JM Chess, but I won't take that queen. I won't take it. Uh, you can take my queen instead, okay? Uh, okay, HDI Chess and Classy Knight moves. Uh, that's okay what you play. The Grandmaster played this in a slightly better way, but okay. Uh, you got the point. Awesome, Owen. I don't think you should uh, go for that trade. It's a bad trade. Your knight is much stronger than that there, Bishop. Um, all right. What else? No winners. Oh, because the third move is difficult. Oh, okay, I understand. Yeah. Um, Amazon, you're very close also. Yeah, you're very, very close. Probably your move is fine as well. Maybe I can go B3 there, B3. Uh, is that possible? Or, or maybe it's not. All right, time's up. We have a winner. Okay, happy to see that. Subham got the whole variation. So please, uh, Subham, please go ahead. What did you find here? Knight a6. Please notice that this move would not make sense was it not for the fact that knight c7 is threatened. So black has no time to play rook b6 due to knight c7. They have to move the rook to b7. And here comes our next move, which is very, very important. So that's what pawn play is about in this case. Suddenly it turns out that white will create a pass pawn on the a file, which would be extremely powerful in this position. Okay, black took on b4. Most people took back on b4, but Subham found a smarter move. Before taking back, we will improve our knight. So it's funny, no, the knight, it wasn't doing anything on a6 apart from uh, pushing away the rook so that we could play b4. Uh, black played in the game, uh, what did they play? Rook b8, I think. And uh, we simply take back with a decisive strategical advantage here. Uh, rook takes b4 and yeah, the pawn runs and the knight is still much stronger than the bishop and black's king is also weak. So a lot of different problems at the same time. Um, thanks, uh, Salham. Great work. You found this in only 1 minute 30. That's really uh, impressive. So if you played in the other way with b4 on move 3, that's perfectly fine. I don't think there is a big, big difference. Maybe I can play rook a7, but of course you can just come back. It's still difficult for black. I don't know. Maybe I can play something like e5. I would love to somehow change the uh, properties of this position, but I don't know if, if I'm able to. Um, but safe to say, knight c5 first, it's, it's more powerful because we put the knight in a good place in the first place. All right, let's check other options. So I hope everybody, we, are, we can agree on this. I hope you can agree with me that this is the best way to go with black. With white, I mean, create a pass pawn on the a file. Now, let's check your other moves here. Yeah, don't do this, please. It's a very bad trade. Try to assess correctly the uh, value of your pieces, the relative value. The knight is, of course, much stronger. It's on a nice outpost and so on. The bishop is very passive. Queen e4, I understand the point you want me to take to uh, improve your pawn structure, probably. But I have no reason to do that. I would play something like bishop c8, put my rook on d8, and try to push e5. I'm not uh, really impressed by this. Uh, also notice that the bishop somehow it's, it's actually restricting the knight right now. Knight d3, all right. If you say knight d3, uh, I cannot take that pawn, can I? What tactical... Oh, knight f4, you mean? Is that the problem? And this, this guy is hanging in the end? Something like that? Rook takes d1, rook takes... I don't follow. I can't take on d1, can I? I don't think so. I'm losing the bishop in that case. So, what to play here? Anyone with a fast tactical eye, what could you play at this point? I think I shouldn't take the pawn, right? Queen e5. <laughs> no, but they'll just take on d4 and play rook d1. Oh, oh, I see, I see. You're t attacking the knight. Nice. Nice. So, that's probably how we should play. Queen e5 or queen d6. I understand. Smart, uh, smart move. Yeah, this does not uh, impress, does it? Unless you have some trick over here, but I don't think so. No. Uh, all right, so 93, I'm afraid it's not really working. Any other move that we needed to check here? Anyone else? Or can we agree that this is the best way to go? All right, so please don't forget about such little factors. I mean, uh, one nice thing about, by the way, the chess chessable classroom is that it's very fast for me to 
just move a piece somewhere else. So let's say I put the rook on b4, I'll put it on a8 instead. Now it's rather simple what white should play, right? Now I don't have to make this a quiz. Anybody would say, which move? If you had this, this position with uh, white pieces, what would you Simple, right? Or should I question this one? <laughs> it's too hard. No, I don't think so. Right. Now it would be extremely simple. Aha. Uh -huh. Of course. Yeah, everybody noticed uh, before. Exactly. Everybody noticed before. So I'm just saying, here it's very easy to see it because uh, the rook is not on b4. But once the rook is on b4, it's like we, we suddenly forget a little about this option. We think that it's not available, but it is indeed available. We have to just use some smart tactics to, to make it work. All right, let's uh, move on. Example number uh, six. Let's have a look at uh, one of the best uh, American players ever, Fabiano Caruana. I know that if I bring up example by Caruana, most probably some people will have seen it already. But uh, okay, never mind. You can uh, repeat things that you already know from the past. So let's see how you would play in this position with the black pieces. Mamedov versus Caruana. Caruana found a very nice plan here with the black pieces, which involves pawn plays. Pawn play, I mean. And that's what I would like you to find. All right? So I'll just quiz you for the first, uh, first two moves. That's enough. Okay. First two moves. How do you think Caruana continued in this position with the black pieces? Remember, pawn play is involved. Okay, Titan Chess, you got it in five seconds. <laughs> you know your Caruana games for sure. Santos, you also found it. Great work. Strategic simmer, interesting plan. Um, but let me tell you that Caruana played on the opposite flank in this game. Charles Hua, L008, Medina Tiger, you all got it. Excellent work. Following the footsteps of Fabiano Caruana. Lele, one, two, three, four as well. I like the move, uh, JM Chess. Uh, I like your, your way of uh, treating the position. I think. That's a very clever move also. Perhaps it's even better than Caruana's move. But um, still, what he played is highly instructive in this game. So let's see what else. Knight e5, that's a surprising move. OK, I see you want to swap queens. Yeah, I think that's not bad either. White is already slightly worse here, right? Black is already slightly better here, thanks to the bishop pair. And white is missing there. Good bishop, so to speak, the light squared bishop. They are sad that the light bishop is not around anymore. All right. Oh, you want to trade bishops, a chess samurai? Interesting. Um, something completely different happened in the game. So let's listen to Santos. All right, uh, Santos, you're on. How do you continue with the black pieces here? G5, very nice. We were talking about uh, this move as very weakening in the second example that we saw today. If you remember the example where we played h5, h4, softening up white's uh, king's instruction, we were saying that g5 is weakening. But here, as you can see, there is no white light squared bishop around. So it doesn't really matter that we weaken these squares a little because we can also always use the bishop to cover them. So g5, we're gaining space. That's what this example is about. We're gaining space on the king's side. We're preventing white from doing the same thing and... We can actually even think about using the h-pawn also. In the game, white played here, I think, the move a3, right? Did they play a3? No, they played h3, I think, in the game. And how do you continue, Santos? Exactly. So we play h5. Please notice, black is not starting an attack or anything. They are just gaining some vital space while waiting for white's next step. After all, all black species were in good places, so it was not easy for them to improve their position uh, at this point. But we had this nice uh, suggestion by JM Chess and RZ2018. I like this move. Definitely half a point if you found this move. It's a very nice move. Rook uh, e4, putting pressure on this pawn. Uh, maybe we could even consider some tactical trick like knight, uh, like bishop c5 later on. Uh, that's a nice move. Bishop h5 is also an idea to, to attack the defender of the pawn and so on. 
But okay, let's listen. I mean, let's see what Caruana played in the game. So g5 was played. White played h3. We had h5 here as... Uh, who said this? Santos said h5. Uh -huh. This game is very impressive. Let me show you what happened. They played here the move a3, uh, like a prophylactic move, uh, prevent some, I don't know, bishop before or knight before maybe. Black played here bishop e6. So at this point, I think white was already slightly nervous about if black is going to sacrifice or the, what are they going to do on the king side. Please notice that uh, Caruana is not in a hurry to play g4 because in that case, the f4 square will fall into white's hands. I don't know exactly what white would play, but maybe they can take once and play knight h4, maybe they can put a knight on f5 and so on. So it's much smarter to play like he played, bishop e6, um, creating some pressure on the on the king side. So white got a little nervous here and they played h4. Okay, so what do you think black played here, anyone? Exactly, Titan chess. We just continue to gain more space. Once you play a move like this, you have to make sure that they won't be able to install some piece on f4, of course. But uh, Caruana had it all figured out after bishop d2, I mean, after knight d2. Exactly, JM chess. That's what he played in the game. Bishop h6. That's a nice move. So we can clearly see that from the beginning, the bishop was, I mean, it's not a bad bishop, of course, but in this way, we were also able to open up some space for our bishop. Now the bishop is very strong on the h6 c1 diagonal, right? So bishop h6, uh, not f5, please. In that case, what would white play, anyone? Yeah, not very difficult, right? Bishop f4, exactly, the brocade. And then we could start dreaming about some other brocade on the, on the dark squares, light squares. So please, uh, uh, careful with that. Bishop h6, we should always think, of course, about what our opponent is up to. Rook c3, and uh, anyone, what do you think uh, Caruana played at this point? Here we go. In the spirit of uh, our topic today, pawn play. Exactly. Guinea Pig, Amazon, Santos, Strategic Seamer, Adi Chess, Quokic, Classy Knight Moves, Chess Samurai, Titan Chess, L008. We have 100% efficiency almost here. Everybody got the right move. That's great. Aha. Yeah, almost everybody got it right. That's good news. Aha. So we should just continue to push those pawns, right? What do you say, strategic simmer, which was your move here? Okay, I don't get any answer from strategic simmer, so I'll play the move myself, f5. Exactly, this move you play when you know that you can play f4 next turn, right? So, yeah, this is, why didn't know what to do? You're right, Titan says, but I don't know either. If you can give them good advice, please go ahead. Mamedov is a strong player. But it was not easy to play this position with, with white. Yeah, this is how the game went. F4, black. Uh, they didn't win material, but Caruana had something preferred here. Anyone, what do you think black played here? Very quickly. Hint, what uh, do the bishops like generally? Aha, you're right. Charles Hua, L008, Medina Tiger, Strategic Simba, Titan Chess, Amazon. That's right. Bishops, they love open positions, right? So it's a good idea to open up the game for them. That's what happened in the game. Right. That's a very nice move. Aha. Uh -huh. So, uh, Milk uh, Carton, what uh, would you play with Black here? You can play out the move, uh, Milk Carton. Okay, exactly. So G3, now we can see completely how White's kingside defenses are uh, ruined. There's no way they can really defend here. In the game, they played knight df1, g takes f2, king takes f2. And I think the last move in, the, in my example here was, was very flashy. He, he found a very nice move here. Um, <laughs> tactical move. Anyone? You can just write in the chat. Uh, nice tactical move. Please notice, we have... Minimum two motives here. One, the open f-file. Two, the rook and the queen are on the same diagonal. So what does that suggest? Yeah, this kind of move Caruana will find in a second. Exactly, JM Chess. You're right. Queen f7. Very pretty. In this way, we prepare to move the bishop somewhere. I don't know exactly where, but we can 
think about different destinies, and at the same time, we're preparing Bishop uh, D7. So there is no way in which uh, white can survive this. Uh, Black went on to win this game. So let's see from the very beginning. Somebody was saying that uh, white played badly. Well, you can say that if you like, but I think that their position is already considerably worse here. Uh, it's not a nice position for white. They don't have any pressure against the pawn on d5, for example. Uh, these pieces, I don't know exactly where to put them, but uh, maybe the knight should have been on d3, on f4, I don't know. But still, the bishop pair amounts to something, right? Black is very happy to have the bishop pair. White is missing the other bishop. So g5, very strong idea by black. They see that they can get away with this. No way white can profit from the square. We can always cover it with our bishop, and we're ready to gain more space like Caruana did in this game. Very, very nice way of playing. All right. Let's move on. Let's see what else we have today. Let's see a game by another, uh, from another game in the US. This game was played between Neff with the white pieces and Corley playing black. black. This is an English battle. I think it was a very interesting opening in the Maroxi, which led to the following position. So you're playing with the black pieces here. As you can see, we have a very nice uh, clash between different advantages. Black has the bishop pair, but white has the better pawn structure, of course. Uh, some of you who, who play the English, you, you can probably guess how did we get here. You can see that white has taken on c6, doubling black's pawns, but at the same time, black has the bishop pair and so on. So how do you think black can get the upper hand here by a very, very clever usage of dynamic um, resources? That's what, uh, what you have to find out, all right? Let's see if we can get this right. All right, I'll just ask you for, for five moves, I think. All right. Why did white give away the light squared bishop? Yeah, because they wanted to create weaknesses in black's camp. They do that. It's not it's something uh, new. It's an old plan. They then want to swap queens, and they want to put pressure on black in the endgame. Yeah. Petrosian used this plan in his days also. So it's, it's a well-known idea. All right. So please remember dynamics. Play with the pawns. Okay, we have some interesting ideas so far. Oh, Chess Samurai, you were extremely close then. I understand. If you play like that, Chess Samurai, I'll play Knight A4. And I'll put my Knight on C3. And I'll try to make a draw there. Okay. We also had a strategic similar, the same situation, all right? Uh, I would then play knight a4. So you can improve that variation, if I'm not mistaken, because my knight is actually in trouble in that, in that case. Okay, it's JM Chess and Milk Cartoon, you're very close. In that case, I'll play knight c5, and I'm hitting the bishop, and uh, there is a fork on d7. But okay, very nice. Several people got this one right, I mean, almost right. AD Chess, you got it uh, completely right. Congratulations. Great work. Excellent work. So uh, one winner here, 80 chess, and we have many people who were close, like Chess Samurai, Strategic Seymour, JM Chess, Mill Cartoon, um, Titan Chess. Right, and Classy Knight Moves, you were close also. Uh -huh. It's a pity you don't have any knights to, to play out your Classy Moves. <laughs> You'll have to do that in the next example. So let's, uh, RZ 2018, you got it also. Let's listen to RZ on this one. How do you continue here, RZ, with the black pieces? What is dynamics about? How to make this bishop happy? Exactly. Please notice, guys, moves like that, they change the game uh, 100%. Moves like E4, they change the structure, they open up files, diagonals. C4 is no longer a safe square and so on. Yeah, great work, RZ. You took your time to think about this. I think that's the right approach. So, in the game, they played rook d1, but let's check first the, the most critical variation. So, pawn takes, white is now a pawn up. However, the knight is unstable. We cannot defend it because, in that case, the rook is hanging. So, we have to move our knight, but the queen is in the air, so knight b6 forced. We don't want to, yeah, right. We don't want to take because, in that case, white will take back and they will have counterplay against this pawn. So you're right, we should play rook b8 instead here. So white has some tactical issues here. They are forced to take. If we take with the bishop, well, in that case, the knight might come to c3 and white will have chances for a draw. So your move is much stronger, uh, RZ. You take with the pawn instead. And now we're actually speaking tactics here. It's more about tactics. It's about the fact that the knight can't find the proper destiny because we can try to 
trapped at night. Exactly. You see what's going on here? The knight is suddenly short of squares. If you go for the knights straight away, well, white could play knight c5 and knight c7 is coming up. So rook b5 and uh, white is in deep trouble here in, in, this, uh, in this position. Uh, oh, maybe that was how the game went. Yeah, that's how the game went. Sorry. That's the course of the game. And uh, white uh, soon lost the game. Black went on to win here. Bishop e3 is a very strong threat and so on. Uh, very, very nice uh, play by Corley in this game. I think they didn't lose the knight, but I can't figure myself how they saved it. Uh, anyone with a sharp tactical eye? B4, yeah, that's definitely what they played, so they can save it somehow. But as you can see, uh, black can perhaps just take, and they will have a... They can maybe take and take twice. I, I don't remember exactly how the game went, but something like that, and you have a passed pawn running also. So safe to say black is in the driver's seat here. In this uh, position so let's go back to the beginning e4 the best move for uh, by the way you were saying some other moves here also but um, just let, let's just see the main line here rook d1 was what they should have played and i thought i thought this was interesting also because um, how would you continue rz at this point how would you benefit from your move e4 how to benefit from this oh that's why i didn't play e4 says l008 interesting but you should have, because please notice, everyone, this is a very solid pawn structure. It's the dragon pawn structure, right? Even if we don't have a bishop on g2, we can sometimes play solidly and we can keep control here of, of our king and so on. But once black is able to swap one of those pawns, the king won't feel that safe anymore. So yeah, we can just take on, on uh, d3. Yeah, don't play anything else, because in that case, perhaps they can take, right? It's protected so pawn takes if white takes back now as you can see this is a terminal for white they will lose this game very soon because what would white black play anyway what would black play what happened with the white king yeah exactly exactly queen d5 and queen is coming there the bishop here yeah this is game over already so white must take with rook instead and like some people are writing here yeah weak light squares exactly very very weak but it's because that pawn went away now queen b8 is the right move. Exactly. Dynamic thinking again, right? We want to put the queen on b5 so that we can straighten out our pawns and then we will have a healthy pawn majority supported by bishop pair. Yeah, positional nightmare for, for white. So this is difficult for white. Rook b3, I think, is what the engine was saying. And after queen a7, uh, white is still alive, of course, but it's more pleasant for black to play this position already. Their pieces are very active. I mean, some trick like rook d4 coming, coming up. These pieces are not... The knight is not stable anymore, by the way. So, yeah, that's what dynamic thinking is about. A move like e4, it will change the game forever, believe me. Very important to understand this kind of thinking, how we can change the position uh, long term. All right, other moves. h5 was, was proposed. I understand, but I'll probably play something like bishop e3, rook c1. That's how you usually play this kind of position. I'm not convinced that this is working anymore. I mean, just for starters, I cannot take it. You don't have queen d4. Uh, what else? Uh, f5 was proposed also. I mean, it's in the spirit of this position, of course, f5. But again, I'm afraid bishop e3 and white is okay. Um, I don't know if there is any other move that you would like to, to discuss here. Uh, any other move which is important to, to look at. Um, else, uh, I think we could uh, have a look at uh, our last example for, for today. So please notice e4, very, very important move, changing the game completely. It doesn't give white a chance to, you know, to relax or bring out the pieces and so on because, because black is already creating concrete uh, threats here. Very, very nice move. So yeah, if you play with white to English and you play this variation with bishop takes c6, you have to be extremely careful uh, not to avoid a move like that. Queen takes d3 instead of e4. How can you play? I don't follow. Queen takes d3 wins for black. When was that? In some other variation, you mean? I don't, I don't follow. Here? The pawn on e4 disappeared. Yeah. Uh, I think we saw that already, right? So let's, uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's have a look at our last example today. Yeah, I think so. This is our last example for today. Let's have a look at a game played last December. It was a few months ago. Uh, Ukrainian Grandmaster with Black Sivuk played in a very, very nice way. Let's see if you can do the same thing here. 
All right, so we are playing with the uh, black pieces here. Uh, you can see that white has a slight um, space advantage thanks to the move e5. They are probably going for rook uh, d1 here. Maybe bishop f3 also is an idea for white trying to swap off black's best bishop. However, black found a nice way in which they could turn the tables in this game. So uh, I'll issue the quiz here so that you can follow the Ukrainian grandmaster's footsteps. Uh, all right, I'll give you just 1 minute 30 for this mission. I don't think it's so difficult. All right. <coughs> Take your time, please. Aha, uh -huh. I'm sorry, JM Chess, Chess Samurai, Charles Hua, L008. A very inventive move, but um, he definitely considered that move also. But I think it's too risky. I think it's too risky. Um, Titan Chess, you got it. That's the right way to play. Think about Titan Chess. How many black pieces become happy once you play that move? Medina Tiger, you got it also. Uh, think about that. How you can make life more pleasant for your pieces uh, by a move like that. Amazon, you got it. Aha. Uh -huh. 80, 80 Chess and Blue Ocean, you were very close also. Uh, great work. Amazin, Medina Tiger, Titan Chess, these are the three winners. Okay, so most people are on the wrong track here, I'm afraid. Um, you can't play like that. I'm not saying it's bad, but the other way is definitely better. Against your move, I'll play Rook 81. I'll just fight for the open file. And uh, okay, we will have a look. Let's just wait for everyone to finish. Pikachu, you got it. Great work. Make life happy for your pieces. That would be the topic of this game. So Subham also got it. Uh, Medina Tiger, please uh, go ahead and uh, let us know what is this about. Exactly. Ugly move, but very powerful. Because once you play f6 in the first place, the bishop gets very happy, right? It doesn't have to look at the pawn anymore. And also, the knight is happy. It now has new prospects. And also, we should remember that the rook on f8 suddenly becomes active as well. Yeah, we can take in different ways, but it makes sense to take with the knight, right? So that, yeah, we get some more central control, and uh, the knight was not well placed on d7 anyway. If you were saying uh, g5, I like your way of thinking, of course. This is a very dynamic move. Unfortunately, it also weakens our king. White could play something like rook d1, and you have to unpin yourself here, I guess, and we can actually take this pawn. It's funny, but this is the best um, way to go with white. You just give up this pawn. I have seen this in the French defense. Sometimes when black pushes d5, just take that pawn. Don't care about your central pawn. This pawn is strong also. It's a double pawn, but it's it's kind of powerful. So uh, take on g5. Black uh, could now play something like queen is... Yeah, we were looking at that, right? Where are we? Rook d8, maybe. I have in my notes here. And uh, if you play knight xc5, for example, I could play knight e4. Now for sure you can see that this pawn is very beneficial for white. It's a good pawn to have on the board, that g5 pawn. So maybe something like rook d8 instead, like more flexible, waiting for white a little to see what they will play. Um, but in my notes, I have bishop d3 and we're attacking this pawn. And yeah, something like this. Knight, bishop e4, you give up this pawn and you play bishop f4. I think material is equal, but uh, black's king is, is a concern. So I'd rather be white here in this, uh, in this position. So. Let's listen again to Medina Tiger. Medina Tiger said f6, uh, e takes f6, knight takes f6, rook d1, I think was the course of the game, queen e7. All right. So black is happy at this point. Their pieces are more active now. The bishops are both uh, looking great, comparing to the white bishops. Knight, uh, The knight on f6 might go to, I don't know, at some point. Uh, okay, I shouldn't say anything about the knight. Um, but if white plays something like bishop f3, for example, anyone, what do you think black should play? All right, I'll quiz you on this one instead. So I'll quiz you. How should black continue here? You're right, uh, Titan Chess. That's completely correct. Uh, chess Samurai also. Aha. Uh, 
And I don't think you should play that uh, Medina Tiger, Ramazin, Guinea Pig, and Subham. You're weakening your position too much. Or Could I play f5 there maybe after your move? I think I would play f5. So a lot of people got it right. RZ, Milk, Carton, L008, and so on. A lot of people got this right. Um, yeah, now we're speaking of improving our pieces. We were speaking so much about pawn play, but uh, you have to do both things, of course, in the game. So now we're speaking about improving our pieces. All right, let's listen to uh, Quacky. Quacky hasn't uh, joined us today. So please go ahead, Quacky. What would you play with black here? Right, we take on f3, and we're very happy now to play knight g4. Please notice that our weak pawn is very strong. If this pawn was on f7, in that case, white might be able to play knight e5. But here this pawn is successfully uh, restricting the white knight. That's another important uh, facet of pawn play, of course, to restrict our opponent. So... Uh, nice, knight e4, and you can see white has tactical problems here. There is a picture with the bishop coming to d4 and so on. Um, that's the right way to go. Don't play, please, the move e5. I think this is an ugly move. Uh, you try to get rid of your weakness, but I'll play f5. And now for sure, your knight must take care of the d5 square. So you can play e4, I'll play rook e1. Ugly, yeah, I would say that too. That's the right word. Don't play like this, please. Uh, white has some ideas like bishop g5 and... 95 also. So that doesn't make sense, really. In the game, they played instead here, let's see, uh, very quickly, they played king h1, um, like a prophylactic move. Black hurried to fight for the open file. Rook takes, rook takes, rook d1. I suspect that white was happy about a draw in this game. After all, in this game, they are lower rated and their position is slightly uncomfortable. At this point, black found a very, very nice move. It's not connected to pawn play. It's connected to improving your pieces. Sometimes you could ask yourself if this or that piece could fly. Where would it fly to? Which square would it fly to? So think about one of your pieces here with black. Where would you like to have that piece and how can you get there? That's the question at this point. All right. I'll just quiz you for one move here. So we'll see if you can find it. Yeah, please uh, behave in the chat, right? Else we will just close the chat. It's... Annoying if you use chat for meaningless discussions. Please focus on chess, all right? So which is the piece that we would like to improve and which is the smartest way to improve it? I get the point, L008. I get the point, uh, and chess samurai. Your way makes sense also. Yeah, half a point for sure. Um, Titan chess, Santos, and crown knights. You got it right. That's what the grandmaster played in the game. Very, very smart plan which will change the game uh, you can bet that uh, this very nice uh, maneuver nice maneuver it will change uh, the game all right we have many moves people said many different kind of moves here but for time considerations let's uh, focus on the right choice so crown knights please go ahead what would you play with black here exactly knight e8 funny retreat however what black has noticed is that this knight has a very nice future going to d4. Admittedly, you could go this way also. I think that's what L08 and Chess Samurai wanted to play. Yeah, I, I like your plan also, but I like more knight d8 because in the way you will touch the knight, the bishop on e3. So you win a tempo. Oh, knight h4 could be annoying. Yeah, exactly. Good point to Titan Chess. Exactly. Once the knight gets there, it's also looking at h4. Very good point. We didn't speak a lot about this bishop, but it's highly present. In the battle. So knight d8, very nice move. Uh, white took on d8, queen takes d8, um, queen d2. Uh, anyone, do you think black should swap queens or they should keep queens? No, says Titan Chess. Aha. What, uh, what do you consider, guys, when you say I shouldn't uh, swap queens or I should swap queens? Which is the main consideration then? What do you take into account when you decide whether to swap queens? Exactly. White's king is very weak, says Titan Chess. Black has more dynamic activities as RZ. Yeah, right, and weak king. Uh, many aspects, of course, if we're material down, for example, don't swap queens and so on, but usually. But one important aspect is exactly what you're saying. If we compare the kings, we can clearly see that uh, black should not swap queens here because white king is more exposed. So the grandmaster played here queen e7, queen d3. I'll quiz you for the forthcoming uh, three moves to make this a little more entertaining, okay? Uh, here we go, one minute. Yeah, the G2 pawn is a weak target. Great, great target, says Titan Chess. Exactly. So let's see if we can find 
the next three moves in this game. You were very close, Amazon Titan Chess. Very, very close. I like uh, your choice. Uh, strategic skimmer, you got it. That's what the Grandmaster played in the game. That's the most annoying move. Aha, L008, you also got it. Uh, there are several tempting moves, but uh, I think your choice is the best because it's weakening their king even more. All right. What else? Queen h4. Yeah, interesting move, queen h4, threatening mate. I get the point. A or, or something like that. E5. We have some people who want to play E5. Don't do that. Uh, you're inviting Knight E5 then. Don't, don't uh, give presents like that. So we have three winners. Strategic Skimmer, L008 and RZ2018. All right, L008. How do you continue here? Exactly. Knight E6. We are uh, improving our knight. We're continuing our plan of uh, bringing the knight to, to a better place. White played here b3, so as to protect, protect his pawn. Black continues with their plan. And now, as we were discussing here, we have different choices with our uh, knight. And here we have a, a nice move. Yeah, I mean, we could, of course, play uh, bishop d4. I guess they didn't play it. I'm not sure, but maybe, just maybe, they didn't like the looks of take, right? Take, and white tries to play bishop f3. I don't know. If I'm, if I'm blundering something, let me know. But... Uh, I think this is something that white could consider, try to swap the pieces here. Or, or maybe this is too much. Or queen h4, maybe it's very unpleasant. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong on this one. Yeah, possibly I'm wrong. So uh, knight e4 also looks very enticing for white, for black. However, uh, what they played in the game was bishop d4. That's a very nice move because we're actually thinking about pawn play again. If bishop takes d4, how would you take back uh, l008? Which is the best way to take back? Aha, you have a 50% chance. Yeah, c takes d4, exactly. It was not bad to take with a knight, but it's much nicer to take with a pawn. Dynamic exchanges is what I call this. Now we are creating a square for our knight on e3, and also the pawn is passed. So uh, this is very ugly for white. They should have played, by the way, bishop e1 and just continued to suffer here in this, in this game. But they took in the game on d4, c takes d4, knight e4, at this point, black is winning. So let's quiz the two last moves of the game. All right. They're not very difficult. So, uh, yeah. Here we go. Black to play and win. That's right. Uh, JM chess, uh, Titan chess, and so on. Not very difficult, no? With no rooks on the first rank, it makes sense for the queen to try to enter there, right? Oh, so many students got it right. Uh, JM Chess, Titan Chess, Subham, Crown Knights, Amazon, Strategic Skimmer, MM Thinker, Mil Carton. Aha. Great. Great work. Some nice tactics coming up there. Aha. Don't take on e4 because I can then take on e6 with check, I guess, and then, bring, and then move my bishop and you won't mate me. All right. Uh, JM Chess, please go ahead. Be my guest. How do you continue with black here? Queen h4, like I was saying, don't take on e4. This is unflexible. In that case, I can take on e6. I think I give check and I move my bishop somewhere. I don't know exactly where, though. Um, anyone? Bishop d3? Let me know if I'm blundering something. But I'm not mated here, right? I'm not mated, I think. I'm covering this mate. And uh, yeah, I'm highly alive here. Queen f2, maybe queen e2 right oh queen a5 first all right if you say so queen a5 uh, definitely however we have no reason to play like this jm chess just told us we should start with queen h4 very pretty move we're threatening queen e1 but also we're threatening bishop takes and knight g3 are all right so white is completely lost here they play just one more move in the game king g1 but resigned after queen e1 since we're picking up the knight so uh, nice uh, example of positional play we started from, a, I would say, roughly equal position, but somehow Black was able to get the grip of this game, starting with the ugly move, F6, but very, very strong because we're act activating our pieces. This pawn is actually very helpful. We spoke about that also. Pawns are useful also for restricting enemy pieces. That's why you should never go E5 in this example, not making any favors to the knight. And then we saw the plan here of Queen E7 and bringing the knight to F5 and so on. 
All right, guys, that's it for today about Pong Play. Thanks a lot for joining in and see you next time. Thanks to Chessable, to Chess uh, Dojo, to USCS, Fantastic Chess Academy. All right, thanks and see you next time.